Okay, we're rolling, boys. All right, guys. So, welcome to the Racist Cat. Hey, Jason, why are you, why are you, why are the podcast <laughs> called Racist Cat? <laughs> just, just asking. Yeah, no, seriously, why the fuck is it called Racist Cat? Well, the first episode, right, um, it was with one of my buddies, uh, who I'm gonna say no name goes, so I think he can't say the name of the, the person, because then, you know, one and two will get, you know, together. Anyways, um, I went to uh, a buddy's house. He had a cat. Always attacked me for no apparent reason, no matter what or whatever. I started the first podcast with him. And there were, you know, more people. So one time, uh, I indulge in a certain uh, herb that I, uh, you know, that I like. <laughs> and... It's like a job. <laughs> what? I like oregano, bro. You know, when you put that shit on your hot dogs and all that, you know? Uh, but anyways, go ahead. this. Oregano hot dogs. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I went to the bathroom, the guy was there, and he was kind of hissing at me. I was dumb, crazy, and I pissed on the cat. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that, that completely <laughs> went left. I did not see yeah, that coming. I mean, I was scared, bro. You know, and the cat. Okay, his like you, so you're like, yeah, like, it's like yeah, a cat. He attacked me multiple times. You know, it doesn't matter what time I went there, when or whatever. But the thing is, next week when I went to his house to visit, he got rid of the cat because smelled like piss. Oh, so it's called racist cat in memory of the cat. You yes, on. and I, I feel bad for you because you know about it. To all my. Uh, you know about it? I mean, cat enthusiasts. Yeah, to all our animal enthusiasts and vegetarians and yeah, vegans, humanitarians, Peter people. We apologize, Peter. Yeah, don't come after us. Yeah, no, I don't want to paint on So for that cat, like me. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know he's probably in the shelter somewhere. He might be dead. I don't know. Don't know. Don't know. Anyway, my name is Jason Rodar. I'm John. I'm Jalil. I'm Andre, and this is the racist cat, I guess. <laughs> I still don't know why it's called racist. So <laughs> I just spent five minutes. Part of me, I'm on the cat attack. All right, <laughs> so <laughs> the first. <laughs> okay. Yo, okay. Cool. So the first topic we're gonna hit on is uh, our upcoming fights. So Jason, John, and I have uh, Muay Thai fights this Saturday. Which is August 10th. Uh, yes, do you, um, do you want to talk a little bit more about your fight prep? No, um, well, I mean, when your fight camp has been, you know, especially at Ronin, being hot, it's been fun, hot, and, uh, you know, going rounds, everything's been going well. I mean, the worst part of it is the club usually, I mean, the worst part of any fight camp is the weight cut. I'm, for me, I don't know what My weight cut's for me. I'm usually in, in like five pounds about there. I'm good. Uh, yeah, I'm on weight. <laughs> my weight. My fight is at 138. I weighed like 138 like today, so. I have to go five pounds still, so. I mean, it's not that bad, I guess. You got five pounds and you complain. Yeah. <laughs> People be, Andre be cutting like 20 pounds. And yeah, over a week, though. But still. But you could also cut weight over a week. I don't know why you don't. Yeah. <laughs> right. You just, for a whole month, you just look, I'm eight pounds away. Four weeks later, I'm eight, eight, eight pounds, pounds away. <laughs> like, wait a minute, what? You could have been lost to weight. You could have been two pounds under. Uh, Anyways, wait till the last two hours. He said, I gotta lose four pounds in two, in two minutes, ass motherfucker. When he weighed four pounds one month ago. <laughs> but yeah, so, um, I think your fight's for a championship too. Also. No, it's Maybe. not. It's not a championship. No. No? no. It's just a regular fight. Three minutes. You remember how to do three that? Rounds. Sorry. Huh? You remember how to do that? Like three minutes. Three rounds. Three regular fight. Yeah. <laughs> you always get a champion fight. <laughs> but John here. I'm a wait, contender. Wait. I'm a contender. This is your continuing fight? Yeah, Coach said, yeah. Coach said, if I beat this dude, my next fight will be like a title shot. How many fights you have? I think I got like five fights. <laughs> yeah, I really remember. Five fights. I mean, how many fights do you have? I can't remember. Ten or five? Jason, you have ten fights? You got ten, ten fights? Oh, you're yeah. yeah. in the double digits now? Nine, 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 I think. Okay, not yet. This will be fight number two. Yeah, yeah this will be ten. I'll high five you. I'll high five you. you when you get into the double digits. <laughs> how many fights do you have, Andre? Oh, Muay Thai or whatever. Because I mean, all the way. This is one of our MMA Muay Thai guys. I got your Muay Thai guys. He do all the MMA boxing. Yeah, I thought he was in the 20s. 
Double nah, digits club list. Yeah. 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 But you're not in the threes, though. Yeah, I'm not in the threes. Uh, this will be my 18th fight. I don't know Quite if I ever reach, I don't know if I ever reach 30. Yeah. My I'm goal? Five. My goal is 222 fights. <laughs> or a Lumpini title, whichever comes last. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean... I mean, what do you, how about you guys feel about this fight, Cam? Uh, yeah, it feels good. Ah, uh, wait, no, go ahead. Because, uh, you know, you. <laughs> <laughs> My fight camp has been ass because I've been working a lot and it's just hard to find time to train or find people to train at weird. And not true. I haven't been gone on Thursday, like Tuesday and Thursday in like a whole month. Me either. So it's just it's been a good ass balance of trying to fucking work a lot to fucking make money to pay bills and then train for this fight. But yeah, I mean, I work my ass off when I'm in the gym, so. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. What about you? Um, I mean, we, no, no, not, I, I ain't hurt. You know, no yeah. one is hurt. I'm, I'm hurt. Okay. I'm hurt now. Because of Andrew today, fucked up my toe. During sparring today or not, clinching or whatever, he, <laughs> he hurt his toenail. Now he's over there complaining. Man, that shit hurt though, like, toenail, like, fucking went up. Except so, we have to, you know, stop you from actually being able to fight? Your toenail? No, you told that's, why, that's why I wrapped it up, because like, if you wrap it up and you keep it wrapped, it heals faster. Oh, who told you that? The two fair? Because uh, it happened last time I did that, and, <laughs> and, and you know. See, that's the thing about fighting. Just just, you, I mean, you can't, like, go a camera down on, like, <clears throat> perfect. You always don't get next and, you know, oh, it hurts. It's, it's just yeah. life itself. Um, yeah, but Andre just had a fight, how many days ago? Two? Two, right. yeah. No. Like three, four, four days ago. Last Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. My days are all fucking. Yeah. Nice. Last Saturday. Tell us a little bit about that. It was MMA. Right? Yeah. It was an MMA fight. What was What happened? With a kid named what was his name? Xander Hardwood. He was from Waterhouse BJJ, or some place in Ohio. But nevertheless, he was a jujitsu practitioner, a grappler. So I just get, I just prepared for a grappler. Like a lot of what I tend to do, like mentally and physically, is just I work out for the kind of fight I'm gonna have to be in. So like I just did a lot of like grappling related exercises and when I was able to do jujitsu before I screwed my hand up, I was just doing some jujitsu and doing grappling and then as far as like rounds doing Muay Thai, just making sure I'm working on like certain aspects of the clinch, certain aspects of striking. So I just knew from watching this fight that how I would have to approach him and I'm like very, very like sadistic when it comes, very like on point sadistic when it comes to like trying to figure somebody out. So with him... I was just, I saw one of his fights and I kind of had the person that he was, figured that he was going to be bouncy and jumpy and real erratic, and then I saw him shadow boxing when we were about to fight, and I was like, oh, he still fights the same like how I saw him fight a year ago. Cause, like Jack Wayne. Yeah, exactly. So I saw him <laughs> fight a year ago, so I just treated him like so how I was, Jack? yeah, exactly. No, I just treated him like how I wanted to treat him as far as just keeping keeping away from the takedowns and, and keeping it standing. The first round, he was able to take me down, though, but... I gave up my back so that I can get out of it because I'm used to with doing jujitsu dealing with guys who take my back. So I just know how to defend it. Got out of it, got him tired, and then the next two rounds I just punched on him. So it, it's it's cool. I like the fighting because I just like the whole aspect of breaking things down to like the the, the, the most uh, tiniest molecule, like trying to figure out. Everything about a person. Like chess. Yes, exactly. Even though I'm good at chess because I never played chess. But nevertheless. I'm different. I let my instinct do my stuff. Yeah, nah. I, 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 don't know. I don't know if I can like think when I'm like. Like, like set traps and all that? Yeah, like set I mean, traps. You, I mean, I you have to balance it. You mean, the thing is, you have to like be able to do that or and also be able to like react to what's in front of you. Mine's mostly from like, instinct from like doing like drills and like. Yeah. It's like just sparring. Muscle memory. Over and over. Yeah, muscle memory. Like that stuff. I just have fun. I just, I just like what, what? I just like to be beautiful. I go with the flow. I like big crowds. Like I, I love fighting at nationals because it's like a perfect time to showcase like everything you fucking worked on. So I go out there and it's just like, ah, just watch me breathe in the air. Watch me do what I do. And how was this transition? Because uh, before uh, this MMA fight, you were doing mostly more Thai, right? Yeah. And then you just had your MMA fight. How was that different? Like, um, in comparison. Not, it wasn't that different. Just stance change more than anything else because the thing is, like, it's 2019. There's still a lot of MMA guys don't know how to check a leg kick or a strike for that matter. So it's like, it's, it becomes one of those things of 
you just have to alter things because you only have two arms and two legs and two knees, two elbows. So there's only but so much you can do. Yeah. So you just have to alter things. So with Ty, you you stand a little taller, you move a little slower. In MMA, you just gotta sit lower because you gotta be ready for a takedown, and you have to move more because you have to be ready to grapple. So that's really the only difference. But all in all, like as far as any martial art that isn't wrestling. And, and is it jujitsu? Like, I would say Thai is the best thing. Like, actual Muay Thai. Not, you know how to kickbox. That's not Thai. Actual Muay Thai is, like, the best thing you can do for MMA because the clinch. That's one thing that's very important for the point that we want to get across to our viewers. Kickboxing is not Muay Thai. No, it's not. Kickboxing is, is, is not, not Muay Thai. Muay Thai is not kickboxing with no. elbows. No. <laughs> Muay Thai is not kickboxing with elbows and knees. No. Okay, there's this martial art called the clinch, right? It's a whole martial art within itself. Yeah. Okay? So that is Muay Thai. Clinch yeah. is Muay Thai. Elbows, yeah. knees, punches, kicks, throws, it's trips Muay Thai. is Muay Thai. Okay. Kickboxing is just kicking to the head. Glory kickbox is not Muay Thai. No. Okay. It's just kicking to the head. That's it. Because the, the thing is too is like when it comes to these martial arts, especially with MMA, the cool thing about it is like if you get yourself in an actual Thai, actual grappling as far as Jiu Jitsu, Judo, you know, whatever have you, your body starts to callous to a lot of the movements and a lot of things. Like you'll know who does Thai once you kick them. Like you can feel the difference in somebody's body. Like. If you do tie and you leg kick somebody, it changes someone's life immediately. No matter how hard you hit them, it changes their, it life. Changes their life. So, like, kickboxers, kickboxers don't know what leg kicks feel like. They don't know what that is. They can tell you they do tie, but if they can't clinch, they don't do tie. They can tell you they do tie because they can throw a little leg kick. But if I kick you and you kick me back, but I kick you and you can't kick no more, then that means you don't do tie. All right. Next topic. Is why you do Muay Thai. So, Jason, yeah. Racist Cat CEO, <laughs> why, why do you, we want to know, the people want to know, why do you do Muay Thai? I mean, aside from like, you know, like just the, the physical aspect, like, you know, you get your cardio, you get your, you know, your health benefit. I mean, it's, it's a beautiful thing, like, you know, you, you, where you're attacking from every area, no matter how far or how close you are, you can either go with elbows, knees, if you want to go medium, boxing, you know, any far away, you can kick, you know, but aside from that, you know, the history is the, is the, everything about Muay Thai, you know, from the sitting in the ring, just like the art, you know, I like art, and Muay Thai is art, and hey, it's one of the best, right? I mean, I ain't trying to like, uh, you know, Kung Fu or whatever. Grab my God. <laughs> Grab my God. I mean, you guys are all cool and all that. <laughs> but I mean, Muay Thai, boxing, that has history. I mean, MMA, I watch MMA a lot too, but I mean, boxing and Muay Thai, that's where it's at, you know? I mean, for me. I did a little boxing before, but I didn't like it as a bitch Muay Thai when I started Muay Thai. You get the little, you get to do all type of stuff. I love, I love leg kicks, you know, but you know, I haven't fought with shin pads. <laughs> he hasn't fought with shin pads, so he hasn't really. So I want to feel. Without I want to feel what my my legs feel like when I hit somebody, yeah. just like straight shin on shin. I don't know. Well, shin I haven't, on, I haven't shin felt that. Yet. It feels so I haven't good. Felt that yet. But if I do hit him right on the thigh, though, mm. that oh, shit gonna hurt. That oh, shit gonna hurt. That shit gonna hurt. Bro, so when when the first time you check and you kick, bro, you feel, you feel like. Mm, wait, 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 why, why, why do you do Muay Thai? The people want to know. Sure, I don't even know. It's just like a, it's just a hobby to get me away from some stuff. I don't know. Just it get get me out the house. You know, I'm you. just, I'm gonna make a game. If, if I don't do Muay Thai, I'm gonna be at home playing people. games. I'm gonna be fucking oh. at home just fucking. Yeah, what games you gonna play? I don't, 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 I
No, like, uh, <laughs> so, like they got all different type of tales, like tales of fucking. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, area, tales. Oh, no, no. Is it like on the computer, like a Steam type thing? No, it's like PS4 game. Uh, well, it's our system game. It's All right, so game. obviously John does Muay Thai, so he doesn't become mm-hmm. a fat piece of crap. Hell yeah! yeah. 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 Hey, no fat exactly shaming. I'm offset, but I'm uh, you know, if I'm doing Muay Thai and all, I have to cut weight. I, I swear I'll be fat. Yeah, I swear I'm. I'm There's nothing wrong with that though. Because what's your favorite fast food? Okay, McDonald's, McDonald's, Wendy's, McDonald's, Ooh, I thought Wendy's. he was going to say Taco Bell. Hey, Taco, Every day. Taco Bell is good, though. I don't even know. I love Taco anymore. Bell. I love Taco Bell. Mm-hmm. I'll be in the uh, freaking, what's that, Panda Express. Okay. Panda Get Express. Fucking uh, Chinese places. Fucking <laughs> uh, uh, Chinese places. Uh, uh, Chinese places, you know. Uh, All right. Shout out to Chinese places. Shout out to Chinese places. Shout out to all the Asian. <laughs> Taste the Orient. Or China. China wall. You gotta get the, the Japanese food in there too. That's just good. Same, same. Wow. Okay, okay. That's why I'm a racist cat. Hey, Joel, we wanna know why you do more Thai. Those people wanna know why I do more Thai, so can I talk to them? Oh, oh why, are, why are we oh, sitting? Why are we? What is our setting? This is my apartment. It's kind of empty. We're sitting on the floor because I don't have enough seats for everybody. So that's where we're at right now. Other than this big ass recliner, but it's only like a one person, we're gonna be two person. If I got a shoddy over you, we gonna be keeping this the same every time. But no, no, no. The setting will change it's every just, time. How do you just tell by the other problems? This is just where we're at for now. That's that's what our setting is. Okay, now why I do Muay Thai? That is a tough question. I don't know why I do Muay Thai. Um, I don't know. Well, I started off my martial arts journey with MMA, pretty much. And we would have like Muay Thai days on Tuesdays and Thursdays at this old gym I was at. And I loved it. Like, it was super watered down Muay Thai. It wasn't real Muay Thai. I was at like this MMA, half MMA, half Taekwondo gym. I didn't do Taekwondo. <laughs> and on sure, Tuesdays bro? and Thursdays, they had Muay Thai. If you do it, you, you get back out of like two uh, years. Uh, <laughs> uh, can I talk? Okay, go ahead. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, <laughs> we had Muay Thai days, right? Monday, Wednesday, Friday was BJJ. And I would always love Muay Thai days. We would always do like shin conditioning and stuff. And I was like, yeah, this is really cool. It was not real Muay Thai, but I liked it. And then I moved here to Columbus. I started coming to a new gym. Um, is it still recording? Jason's looking at the phone to make sure it's recording. Is it still recording, buddy? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Make a long story short. Came to Ronin, started doing Muay Thai there in between my MMA classes, and then I really started to learn what real Muay Thai was. I started watching videos and educating myself. Shout out to Boggs, Crew Boggs. Shout out to uh, Crew. Shout out to uh, Don Boggs. Crew Boggs. Saudi Cop Boggs. Saudi Cop Crew Boggs. Um, yeah, and then I just I fell in love with it, just like Jason. I fell in love with like everything, the the spiritual side of it, the physical side of it, like everything. The mental aspect is fucking, it's amazing. Yeah, that's why I do my time. It's humbling. It really is. Yeah. Like everyone, like, it's so funny because you see, you walk out in the street or whatever, and you see people like, oh, burr, he tough, boo. They <laughs> just like laugh or whatever. Like we're all destroy you, like one, you know, like. I'll show you the one touch. My hands are my hands are registered. Hey, shout out to uh, his YouTube channel. My hands are registered. <laughs> my hands are registered, bro. Man, I, I started doing martial arts and everything all together because I had like a cancer scare when I was like 23. My doctor thought I had throat. my doctor thought I had throat cancer and it freaked me the fuck out. And then um, so I was going through the whole process of figuring out whether or not I had it as far as like going to see people and shit like that and during that time I was doing a lot of like introspection and thinking to myself like what have I already done in my life and like once I found out I was good I caught myself watching like a old highlight video of, of MMA fights and it was like Jose Aldo kicking I didn't know who he was at the time beating up Uriah Faber and I'm like oh I want to do that so at 23 I just tried I started doing stuff just like everybody else in my crib on YouTube watching stuff in my house just practicing, doing this shit all wrong, and you know, found, found him in the gym in New York, I was there for a little bit, uh, for it, like, once or twice, and I ended up moving to Ohio, because uh, my cousins told me that there was, like, a lot of gyms out here that had MMA and stuff like that, found Ronan, 
and I got into time more than anything else. Like I like grappling and stuff like that too, but I got into time more than anything else because it it's so much like striking is it, it, it it's so much to learn and it's especially like with the clinch and with everything else just balance and all that it's so much to learn and it, it's so relaxing. Like it's just being able to kick somebody is very relaxing, as weird as that sounds. Like punching Punching somebody and getting punched or trying to not get punched is just super relaxing to me. So that's why I like doing that. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. Again, Andre, 31 fights. Jalil, uh, 17 fights. Jay, I got five fights. Jay. Yeah, John, John fan. We got two more fights. <laughs> I almost called you James. <laughs> I swear to God. James fan. I don't know what I mean. Jason. Nine fights. Yeah, so we are just, we all train at the same gym. <laughs> Is anyone going to say the name of the gym? Oh, I didn't say it. I didn't realize. Uh, wait, yeah. Wait, no, he did say it. He said train Ronan's earlier. Yeah, yeah I did say Ronan's. Oh, uh, okay. Channel 2 Ronan Training Center. Yeah. Shout out Ronan TC. Um, he teaches there. Yeah. Coach, you a coach too. We all teach there. Yeah, yeah. All all coach. All of them he teaches the youth, the next generation of Muay Thai fighters. Yeah. I teach uh, morning Muay Thai, and then I teach beginner MMA. So I teach the the people who want to eventually punch people in the face. And John does nails, anyway. <laughs> and John does pedicures. But anyway, <laughs> I can't I can't do teaching. I can't like explain it like y'all be teaching. Like explain because like I see Andre, so he be going around like freaking. Telling people like ex- like exactly what it is like he be putting like extra stuff and I'm like, like well, no, how the hell do you even do this? You're, you're not I can't, I can't yeah. as you start, yeah, and you get better, bro. I don't know, like yeah, I don't really know how nice. to like explain how to how for people to do. This. I was I so nervous about to teach my first class. People were asked me, uh, Lou, you want to start? You know, maybe do teach a morning my Thai class?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sure, whatever, you know." But I was so nervous, like more nervous than a fight because <laughs> I don't know. Like Muay Thai is serious, and it's like, can I, can I be that person who molds somebody to be a good Muay Thai fighter? Like, could that possibly be me? It's like I don't know. It's a very, it's just like teaching someone how to drive. Like if they crash, who is it on? You know what I mean? So yeah, I was pretty nervous before before I started teaching. Yeah, if you don't, the teaching makes you better because it's like if if. If you can't teach somebody, well, if you can teach somebody something, that means you uh, actually understand yeah. it. And every time you're teaching it uh, to them, you also be learning it yourself. Exactly. You know, you're finding different gimmicks and stuff like that. I mean, same thing with chemistry. I did the same thing. Like, I also used to teach chemistry, well, two of their chemistry. And, you know, every teacher used to tell me that. Shout out to Dr. Moran, one of my best teachers ever. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> I'm not even just, <laughs> Like, what do you think the cute laugh for? Good morning. Shout out Dr. Marie. Who is that? 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 Who is I like at first I like going to college and I don't have to study or anything. He has to be just sit me down and like teach me how to study. Jason Sweet Are you sure you have this one? Yes, yeah. But um yeah, like I didn't know how to study. So he was like, Man, how about you teach other you know, simple stuff and you know, you we learn even better as you're teaching and that applies to like pretty much anything. The more you teach it, the more you learn it yourself. Like yeah. more time. It's the same teaching is learning first. Yeah. Whoever that is. <laughs> it's over that day. Okay. Next topic. Favorite fighters. Ooh. Oh, we'll change this to favorite fighter and why they're your favorite fighter. Okay. Ooh. So with yeah, Andre. I don't even know right now. Yep. Andre, it's on you. Your it's favorite a, what? fighter. Thai fighter or fighter? Thai. Thai. We'll do Thai fighter. Yeah. Oh. Alright, no, we can do fighter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fighter. MMA and... I don't watch that much Thai fighter. Okay, so yeah, fighter, fighter period. period. Yeah. Your favorite fighter. My favorite fighter, period. R.P. to Pernell Whitaker was uh, Pernell Whitaker. The reason being, yeah, he, was, he was a wonderful boxer. The reason he's my favorite fighter is just his his attention to detail with his footwork and his ability to his ability to set traps while all at the same time having fun. So, so like in Muay Thai, there's like Muay from Yous. Those are like the people that like they play with you. But they set traps, they're having fun as they're beating your ass, but they're like putting you in positions 
to think you, you're good, but at the same time, just constantly making you pay for every single thing you do wrong. And that's how Pernod Whitaker was as a boxer. When he, his footwork was so like out of this world, he was putting people in the positions that they think that they're good and they're not. Like, for instance, one of, his, one of my favorite fights of his is when he fought a young Oscar De La Hoya. And he made Oscar look stupid. There was a point where Oscar threw like a seven, like at least a ten punch combination at him. He weaved everything, and at the end, it was very at the end of the round. He shook, he like did the shake and danced off. But it's like that, I like that. yeah, it's like that. Like having the ability to have fun. Like I like, I love Parnell because he had fun the whole time, and that's what I've had to learn as I've went through this journey of fighting is learning how to have fun. Like because you can fight so many times to get to the, a point where you can hear everything and see everything that's going on but then you take fighting too serious and then when you realize like something like Muay Thai where you've got people fighting since they're like seven years old and then they're like in their 20s they already got 200 some odd fights they had fun that whole time like just being just realizing like it's not that serious you're already in a fight like you don't need to take it serious we're, we're already punching each other in the face what else should we be doing right now so that's why I love Pernell because he just his boxing was beautiful and he had fun R.I.P. Skip. Are you skipping? Yeah. No, you're right, good. No. Oh, wow. no, let me go. Let me go. Mine's different. Mine's different. All right. Mine's different. No. Nah. <laughs> it's very funny. Um. All right. She so I, I started watching UFC like a long time ago. Right now, my first fight. I guess who I saw. Okay. Chuck Liddell. I knew it. Chuck Liddell. Yeah. He. I just see that like a wallet. Where's my super suit? Wallet punches and shit. I can't think of anybody else right now, but. That's my first dude I watched it, and I like him. He just fucking just wilding, just fucking, fucking overhand full of punches. And I'm like, damn. Hell yeah. And then he just started fucking watching UFC and shit. I'm like, shit. And then he started getting beat up and shit. I'm like, man, you still my favorite fighter, though. Yeah. I'm sure you lost him out. But that's what Write it down. Shout yeah, out Chuck. Shout out Chuck Liddell, you know. Uh, I mean... Well, you, you, can't, you can't think of it. I know, I know who mine is now. I just want to speak right. <clears throat> um, crap. Because this, man, I, I would like to say my favorite fighter overall. I mean, because I watch a lot of Muay Thai. I mean, man. Muay Thai. See, I have to be the Nam Nam Moon or Kago Hot. It's just, and I, the thing is, so I train with Nam Nam Moon. And uh, my uh, fa- no, no, <laughs> Maybe I hear a name dropping. <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the reason why, the reason why I'm torn. The, um, the reason why, because he is one of like, he might call me. No, he, he, he's one of my, my favorite fighters, but then again, like they have a rivalry back when they were fighting, so yeah. he's like, oh man, they don't have a rivalry anymore. I mean, they don't, yeah, like 60. Oh, Ooh, 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 that's when you get there. Yo, he's going over there in January. <laughs> no, he's not that old. He's like, he's, he's sending your 60 career. Yo, remember that, video. Video. Remember but that. How old is he actually? Oh, they think they 40. Yeah, he's probably just 40. Yeah. Also, a young 42. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the brown and brown. Jason, you lied. But, um, yeah, I just like... Uh, Lambda Moon has the beautiful knees, like you know, the vampire knees, uh, kind of has the elbows. He is like, oh man, but modern fighter, I think I have to say Sam A. Modern fighter, that's my favorite fighter, I think. But just the way he moves, Dar's just teeth, Dar, you know, he, everything is perfect. Ooh, good. That's a good one. That just reminded me who my favorite fighter was. My favorite fighter would have to be Nong. Oh, uh, okay, now. Yeah. I I love Nongo. I love his style. He's super beautiful. He's very smart. Like watching his stadium fights where he fights, he makes Petch Boon Chu look so silly. Like there's not many people who make Petch Boon Chu FA group look silly. No. And Nongo can keep him walking on thin ice, fucking falling over. He's just All so nice. Time. And with anybody, he can do he can do it to Sanchai. He oh, can do it to man. anyone. He can do it to Sit down. Same down. Anyone like Nongo is he's next level, and just like how Sanchai is still fighting, Nongo is still fighting. But Nongo is fighting really, really good fighters. Yeah. <laughs> I can't say that about you know, but I'm not gonna talk bad about Sanchai. But Nongo is my good is my favorite fighter. I was gonna say my favorite fighter was just because I want to talk about this and it's gonna lead us into our next topic. 
uh, my favorite fighter would have been Jordan Coe. Oh. I don't know if you guys know Jordan Coe, but he was a young lad. Uh, he trained actually at London Moon's gym for a while. Um, yeah, he he geez. passed away. He passed away a few years ago, cutting weight. Went on a run by himself, and you know, the shit happened. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like, I guess uh, you know. Okay, rest in peace, man. And, like something like that happens. I mean, we are in a fighting sport where you know there's a lot of like. People can die cutting weight. People can die in the ring. People can die. Yeah, know, I've almost died cutting weight. Yeah. But coming out of the ring, like two fighters just this week, right? Yeah. yeah. On a positive note, though, yeah, Jordan Coe, and why he would have been my favorite fighter is because he had that fucking energy. Like when I get ready for my fights, when I'm th- when I have a fight coming up, I try to keep that Jordan Coe energy. They call him the dancing boxer because all of his fights he came in dancing, had his flute, you know. So he even one time had a little kid come into the ring with him and he's dancing in the ring with this little kid like that's that energy I love about fighting super light super fun just cause like you only get one life and he's like he was living it to the fucking fullest like he passed away doing what he loved and I respect that so I just try to keep his energy living on and it does I know it does but yeah I think y'all think like smart fighters I like the fighters that like like just bang just going brawl and shit it's cause John cause I think that's how I think that's how I'm like, I just, you know, like, just try to brawl I just try to brawl all of y'all. I don't care. Like, you, like y'all, y'all all like fight kind of smart. Y'all like, they even like. Fight smart. I know. I, I don't know. You fight pretty smart. I think. Y'all, <laughs> I, I think y'all. I think y'all fight pretty smart. Bro, you should start watching Rock Yeah, yeah. 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 You, you're shaped like. Ugly as shit. I look pretty Listen. good. I look pretty good. Compact. But or, no, I just like to. I just like to go and just. David Tua. I think it. I don't think it. Really? Hey, I don't think it. Watching yeah. Rob Tom and then it's fought like a heavyweight. David Tua was like a BC ass heavyweight. Him and Mike Tyson, I wish they would have fought somewhere down, but David Man, Tua. I watch, I watch it. You ever seen Mike Tyson? Da- you ever watch David Tua? No. He had a mean left hook. He would throw, he would double it up as a heavyweight. Don't, yeah, yeah, every time. Yeah, yeah. Every, every time, time I'm in the ring, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not <laughs> you guys <laughs> said Bull Carl. Not you guys said Bull Carl Sancho. Bull Carl. Nah. Hey, Bull Carl. Bull Carl was my dude when I first started he's watching yellow. fights, because that's everybody's dude when you first start watching Tom fights. Cause that's I saw his training video on Tom, and now I just started watching like Honestly, it. I was watching Sunshine today, and I used to get mad when people said he is the GOAT, but I can understand, now I can understand why some people can say that. That's what I have to say about that. Man, I completely forgot. Like, I love Sunshine. I met him. He gave me a hug. So yeah, Sunshine's the shit. <laughs> Uh, uh, I got the scroll. America, Stace America. Yeah, I, he's one of I, I like him a lot too. I was he's definitely one of my like, honorable mentions. Because he's Southpaw. Yeah, Nongo's my dude. So I'm from Nongo too. Why you like everybody? And then, I would, I'm then the old so school dudes is, 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 is Ole and fucking. Uh, oh, uh, and we're Com- doing honorable mentions right now. Yeah. Ole, Ole, Compton, fucking uh, Silverstein. Those are my favorites. Like I just like I like people I like people that are uh, having fun while fucking you up. Yeah. Like that that's oh, cause it, it makes me wanna do that because I used to I've had all of the emotions every time I fought. I've had to I don't care, I've had to be super angry, I've had everything. Like I've got to a point where like I'm at the point where like I don't I, I don't care, I just have fun. Like my last fight I was dancing the whole time, dancing <laughs> while we was fighting. Like he was trying to take me down and just sort of slapping my legs and like just telling him to take me down. I wonder how much fight to be able to do all that. It's, 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 it comes with time. Yeah, it comes with time. It comes with the understanding that it's already, it's already serious. Like, we already got to punch each other in the face. So there's no need for me to feel like it's any more serious than that. Yeah. That's, yeah. And we'll stop right there. I think it's been about an hour. Yeah, this but- is the racist cat. Podcast, right? Yeah, is that what it's called? Or we yeah, introduce yeah, we ourselves. Have, you know, <laughs> just... So, okay, this is what happened. Let me clear it. Don't tell me. No, no. Let's tell you who your name is. All right, so, 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 so it's called Racist Cat because the cat attacked you? No, so, uh, yeah. Right, yeah. Like, 